In the early 1990s, Cadillac set out to reclaim its throne as the pinnacle of American luxury by unveiling a radical new engine, the North Star V8. Promising silky smoothness, cutting edge technology, and enough power to rival Europe's finest, it was meant to redefine Cadillac for a new era. Instead, it became infamous as one of the automotive world's biggest engineering embarrassments, a banned engine whispered about behind closed doors in dealerships and service bays. Today, we're pulling back the curtain on the shocking truth behind the North Star V8. From revolutionary design to catastrophic failures, we'll explore how an engine celebrated at launch quickly devolved into nightmare reliability problems, dealer headaches, and a punch-drunk reputation that nearly sank Cadillac. Stick around. What you're about to learn will change the way you view automotive innovation and the price of pushing technology to them. Fast, birth of the North Star, Cadillac's high-tech vision. In a bold display of ambition, General Motors invested hundreds of millions into a brand new engine plant in Romulus, Michigan. The goal? To build a modern dual overhead cam V8 that combined all aluminum construction, four valves per cylinder, and advanced digital engine management. Dubbed North Star, it wasn't just an engine, it was the centerpiece of Cadillac's fight to shed its stodgy image and attract younger, tech-savvy buyers. When the North Star debuted in the 1993 El Dorado and Seville STS, Cadillac touted 275 horsepower, variable valve timing, and a flat plane crank for smooth idle. It sounded like the ultimate expression of American luxury meets high performance. Early road tests praised its refinement, and engineers basked in the glow of what they believed was a world-class power plant destined to outshine any rival the cutting edge technology inside. Unlike pushrod V8s of old, the North Star featured aluminum heads and block, double overhead camshafts driven by a silent timing chain and a sophisticated cooling system routed directly through the cylinder heads. Every aspect was engineered for maximum efficiency, individual coil on plug ignition modules, microprocessor controlled fuel delivery, and a flat plane crankshaft that reduced vibration without heavy balance shafts. Under the hood, the engine measured just 25 inches wide, remarkably compact for a V8, allowing Cadillac to install it transversely in front wheel drive platforms. This packaging feat enabled lower hood lines and sleeker styling, reinforcing Cadillac's promise of marrying performance with luxury. On paper, there was nothing not to love. Early triumphs, power and prestige. Cadillac's marketing blitz showcased zero to 60 times below six seconds, sophisticated cruise control options, and whisper-quiet operation even at highway speeds. Owners raved about the instant torque, the smooth handoff from idle to redline, and the feeling of effortless acceleration that left European sports sedans in the dust. Luxury magazines hailed the North Star-powered models as trophies of American engineering. Cadillac dealerships buzzed with test drives, and for a brief shining moment, it seemed the North Star had done its job, bringing excitement back to the cresting wreath and crest. The cracks emerge, head gasket failures, but behind the scenes, troubling whispers began to grow louder. Early service records revealed a disproportionate number of head gasket failures, often as soon as 50,000 miles. Coolant would mix with oil, leading to rapid engine wear and catastrophic damage. What was meant to be a sophisticated cooling design turned into a liability, corroding the aluminum heads and block at their weakest points. For owners, the nightmare began with mysterious overheating, sudden loss of power, and ominous white smoke from the tailpipe. Then came the grim dealer diagnoses, cracked head or warped block. Repair estimates routinely soared above 5,000 even for relatively low mileage cars, and warranties were stretched thin as GM struggled to contain mounting complaints. The hidden design flaw, coolant passages. Too close, engineers eventually traced the root cause to overly narrow coolant passages running through the cylinder heads. Designed to evenly cool the combustion chamber, these tiny channels trapped air pockets and debris, creating hot spots that fractured the aluminum casting. In colder climates, thermal cycling worsened the problem freeze-slash-thaw cycles and unaddressed coolant led to hairline cracks that grew over time. 
Attempts to retrofit improved gaskets and revised cooling system components offered only temporary relief. Underneath each fixed North Star lurked the same fragile architecture, waiting to fail again under normal driving conditions. What Cadillac thought was cutting edge became a blueprint for disaster. Warranty battles and customer outrage. As repair bills skyrocketed, owner dissatisfaction boiled over into class action lawsuits and scathing consumer advocacy reports. GM extended warranties and offered goodwill repairs, but many buyers felt betrayed. The once glamorous North Star cars became rolling lawsuits, service departments stocked full of head gasket kits, and dealership service bays jammed with broken down Cadillacs. Online forums lit up with horror stories, engines seized on the freeway, tow trucks called on family vacations, and trade in values plummeting to pennies on the dollar. For Cadillac loyalists, the bitter truth set in. Their dream engine was a ticking time bomb. GM's quiet recall in service bulletins. Officially, GM never issued a full recall, as head gasket issues are often classified under maintenance rather than safety. Instead, dozens of service bulletins appeared, offering updated gaskets, revised cooling system fittings, and instructions to burp the system of trapped air. Dealers were told to emphasize proper coolant maintenance and extended oil change intervals, but these piecemeal fixes failed to address the core design flaw. Without re-engineering the heads, an impractical factory solution, North Star cars continued to arrive back in service lanes with the same ailments. GM's half measures only fueled owner frustration, reinforcing the perception that the company had abandoned its own flagship engine. Impact on Cadillac's brand image. Cadillac's reputation as America's answer to BMW and Mercedes took a severe blow. As buyers shied away from North Star models, sales of Cadillac vehicles slid, some years dropping by double digits. The company scrambled with marketing campaigns promising reliable performance, but the damage was done. Many prospective buyers crossed Cadillac off their lists and turned elsewhere for luxury and dependability. In boardrooms, executives debated whether to continue investing in North Star or pivot back to tried and true pushrod designs. The engine that was supposed to herald Cadillac's future instead accelerated its return to conservative engineering in reliance on outsourced V8s from GM's truck division. Aftermarket salvation, bulletproof kits, and head studs. As dealer fixes fell short, the aftermarket stepped in. Specialty shops began offering bulletproofing kits, high-strength head studs, improved gaskets, and modified coolant fittings that enlarged the passageways. Enthusiasts with DIY spirit saw these upgrades as a lifeline to keep their North Star alive at a cost of 2,000,000, 3,000,000 factor per engine. While many owners swear by these mods, reporting 200,000 mile engine lives without gasket failures, others found the work too invasive. Removing and reinstalling the complex cam and timing assembly is labor intensive, making the DIY path unappealing for the average Cadillac buyer. So what do you think? Was the North Star worth the gamble? Or should Cadillac have perfected proven designs instead? Drop your thoughts in the comments, hit that like button, and subscribe for more deep dives into the engines and engineering stories that shape the cars we drive today. Whether it's a luxury V8 or the latest electric motor, remember, true innovation is only as good as its reliability.